Hey guys, what's up? Good morning. Morning coffee. Super cheers to y'all. As a little bonus, I got a, I got a muffin. My favorite type of muffins are blueberry. Actually, blueberry anything is uh, pretty cool with me. Blueberry pancakes, you know, blueberry coffee, and so forth. Also, I got Kermit the Frog here visiting. My girlfriend likes to buy plush toys and stuff, so <laughs> she got this guy when uh, we went to Disneyland. Cute little fucker, right? All right, so on to my next peripheral video of uh, stuff that I use to edit. Now, when I started editing, like, uh, I mainly used IMAX, right? Because when you go to school, that's pretty much the first thing that they shove down your throat, at least for it. When I went to school, it was basically IMAX. It's kind of lame, you know? Like, they don't really bring up any other software. It's just strictly, it's always Final Cut Pro and uh, Max. Uh, maybe things are different now, I really don't know, but going to school, that's all I knew about, which is Max and um, Final Cut Pro, right? So I had one for like the longest time and it was pretty much like, you know, something similar to this, you know. I mean, it was, it was cool, you know, it was thin and, you know, had his base and all this stuff. But man, this thing fucking got hot. Like the housing is all made of aluminum, aluminum, however you say that. And like, um, that pretty much worked as a heat sink. So when I was editing or working off this thing, the entire thing just radiated so much heat, right? Because that was basically how it cooled itself. It's like the back, the back side of this thing was just like a giant slab of aluminum that just radiated heat and just like ah, it made my room hot and i hated that thing when i started editing with pcs i didn't have many monitors to at the moment right so i actually used this display as a monitor you were able to actually connect like a display port or, or a cable and use it as a pc monitor and uh so i had my pc creating heat and then i had this damn thing creating heat so it made my room my living oven and it sucked ass right so <laughs> also i used my tv like a 720p monitor as a secondary monitor. So I was using this as my main monitor. And then I used my TV, which was like a 720p monitor at the time. And this is what I was working, you know, <laughs> off a fucking computer with my PC. So yeah, <laughs> it's funny to think about now, holy shit. Okay, so th that being said, <laughs> so when I was editing videos for Paul and one of like the first complaints that he brought up was that like the, the videos were always coming out red, right? And like, uh, he asked me about, you know, what I was using for editing, you know, to, for my monitors. And I told him that this, it turns out like the color that was coming out of this monitor was very yellow, right? It had like this like yellow hue. So I was adding red to kind of like counteract that yellow to kill it, right? So the final product, it looked bad, right? It wasn't really like a true color. It was coming out very red. He told me about getting a uh, standard colored monitor and I didn't know anything about that. Standard RGB, right? So... I'm not going to go into the science. I don't understand it much myself, but basically from my understanding, like a uh, standard RGB, I guess this, the standard RGB values are something that is more universally read through many monitors or whatever. So look into that yourselves. Cause like, I, I really don't understand it myself. I didn't really look into it. I just brought this up just to like, you know, explain to you what it is briefly. There are monitors that like contain this like information that they display a standard RGB color profile, right? So, so the monitor that I'm using is this. It's the BenQ BL2711U, right? 100% standard RGB and whatever that is based with 10 bits IPS technology, right? So before I bought this uh, monitor, I actually reached out to Paul and like, you know, sent him an email. I'm like, hey, can you look into this and let me know if it's something that I should get? And he did, right? And like, uh, I looked it up on Amazon and it currently is not available. So I don't know, maybe they just continue these or obviously they're making new stuff, right? But uh, at the time, this monitor cost me like around $500, right? At the time, this was kind of a fair deal because a lot of monitors I was looking at that were 4K and standard RGB, they were like up to a thousand. So obviously that was a lot of money. So um, I found this for $500. When I first got this guy and then I compared it to my main monitor that was using the iMac, it was just like, wow, it was just amazing. Like I didn't realize how yellow that shit was. So <laughs> if I was to like talk to myself like a few years ago when I was starting to become a filmmaker and like, you know, I'm trying to figure out what I should get to improve myself as a editor, I will say wait till last to get yourself a monitor don't get it right off the bat all right so i mean if you guys are looking just to edit and not really like uh say game you know do any series gaming or maybe you don't know you're not interested in streaming not interested in doing any type of like screen capture of your gameplay or anything like that um, I suggest, you know, take it that $500 and get yourself a good graphics card. And like in this case, like I said, if you're starting out and you're not into the whole streaming and stuff like that, I say go with a 2080. 
and you can see here, I mean, I like Zotac. I don't know, just like the brand, but I mean, you can get whatever you want. But as you can see here, they're roughly around like 459, you know, 500 bucks area. Now with a 1080, you get eight gigabytes of, of like VRAM. Eight gigabytes is fine. You know, I think that's sufficient, you know, for editing and whatever else you may need. Eight gigabytes is just perfect, right? Now this motherfucker has 11 gigabytes, right? So, you know, it is nice to have that little extra just in case, right? But I mean, like if you're, like I said, you get the 1080, and you have eight gigabytes, I think it should be okay. I totally believe you'd be fine, right? I feel like the main difference that uh, these new 2080 Ti's graphic cards have is you know, the RTX series or whatever is basically that um, these have like a built-in technology where something that I've been using lately is basically I've been using the card itself to pretty much like screen capture my 4K gameplay, right? And like I'll make a video down the line of how I do that, right? I've been using like the GeForce Experience software from like Nvidia to like screen capture, right? It's not great, it's very too simplified for me and I'll get into the why, what I like and don't like about it. But the cool thing about this software at least is that um, it's designed to work with your graphics card, right? So if you have a 2080, you know, one of those RTX edition cards, it automatically uses that part of the graphics cards to record, to encode your gameplay, right? The screen capture and also to just like uh, stream your uh, gameplay, right? onto something like Twitch and like I just think that's really cool right because uh, I was trying to like you know capture my gameplay using OBS and OBS is great I mean that's what I'm using at the moment but when it comes to like capture gameplay it pretty much like I was starting to drop too many frames that you couldn't keep up with it right so me using my 2080 Ti using the built-in technology I was able to screen capture a 4k without losing not many frames there are moments you can see you know stutters I mean obviously for the most part my footage looks awesome and it's just very easy to work with right so I think I think that's just for me at least that's kind of like the main pros and cons of like using a 20 the 2000 series graphics cards versus the 1000 series graphics cards right so like i said if you're trying if you're starting out and you want to get a good graphics card and save yourself some money and like you know you're not really interested in gaming too much maybe like a little bit here and there but not into the whole game content crap definitely go with a 1080 but if you want to you know take a you know up take a step up and you want to have the new current technology and all the stuff and like you want to, you know, game capture and all that shit, go with the 2000 series of the cards, you know, so that's my two cents on that shit. I think it's more important that you get yourself a good computer, you know, help build that stuff, and especially get yourself a good graphics card, because the graphics card will help make a massive difference for your editing. Now, since I use Premiere Pro, it turns out Premiere Pro and NVIDIA, they kind of work together, and, like, they create, like, uh, Adobe created a software, and NVIDIA created, like, technology where you have, like, GPU accelerated filters right so there's a lot of filters that work in premiere pro that you don't need to be rendering it just works straight right because it uses like the gpu to like render it everything in real time so that is a massive time saver right amd graphics cars technology is pretty much what you find in a lot of apple products right and like uh that's something that pretty much works with final cut pro so if you're using final cut pro obviously that's uh that's an apple product so final cut pro works well with uh, AMD graphics cards technology and all that, right? You know, that's designed for each other kind of thing. So that's something to keep on mind. Hardware and software do work simultaneously, right? So <laughs> keep that in mind. All right, so to end this video, I'll put the link in the, the description. Like, you know, almost a year ago, pretty much Paul made a video of the ASUS PG35B monitor and this stupid thing goes for like two thousand, three thousand dollars. They're fucking expensive. <laughs> That's a gaming monitor, right? Now uh, I kind of want to bring this up because since I'm talking about monitors, I want to talk about like a monitor for editing versus a monitor for gaming and all this stuff, right? Yeah, there's a part in the video where like I'm playing, you know, Apex and like uh, it's a nice monitor. I can actually feel the damn difference. Like it's very smooth, right? It was so smooth that it was kind of like shockingly smooth because I wasn't used to that. So playing something that has 200 hertz refresh rate, you know, it's like a massive difference. So it did feel nice, right? I want to end with this. If you watch a lot of these ads for like these like gaming monitors, like there's always like the same thing in the sense of like, oh, it has like shadow enhancement. Oh, it has like white brightness. So it has some kind of like uh, color equalizer. So like whatever's supposed to be bright gets dimmed down so you can see like the detail of the fire and where the shadows are at it increases the shadows so you can see more details in the shadows and all this and that right so that's something that you do not want <laughs> i feel for me when you want to have a nice good color accurate monitor right so yeah i guess i'll end with that if you want to get yourself a gaming monitor and you're thinking oh maybe i can use my gaming monitor for like uh you know doing your video editing just be careful with that 
I mean, just do some research and looking for a monitor that you know that has like the high refresh rate and all the stuff they want, but it does have the option to have a more color accurate uh, image. You know, if it has built in SR the standard RGB technology, cool. Uh, that I know of, I don't know if there's any gaming monitors that has that. These monitors are designed to have like the standard RGB technology, so it's different than having the gaming monitors, obviously. This video is probably long enough, so I'm gonna end it here. Thanks again for your questions. Feel free to leave comments and I'll get back to you. Take care and peace. Bye.